Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how to use control net with Flux on Macbooks. So for the control net, we will be using the Slaps AI. So this is their Hugging Face page. If you go to there, you can find the, all the needed multiple control net models. You can go ahead and download those. We will use that later. There's also a workflow. There is uh, three workflows. There is also one Im image which you can use as example. Next, I want to talk about how to install that. If you go to the home page for their control net, there is an installation guide. So basically, you are able to follow that just fine. So I will do a quick demo on how to do that. So make sure that you have Comfy UI installed already on your MacBook. If you don't, please refer to my previous tutorials on Comfy UI and also Flux on Comfy UI installation. Let's uh, first activate your Conda environment and uh, change your directory to your Comfy UI location. And then you can go to your custom node location and uh, do a git clone of the internet source code. So you are able to get that from here. So you're going to run that. All right, so you can press enter. After that, you're going to go to the directory and do, if you look at uh, the contents inside uh, the requirements, the txt, you're going to see there are multiple dependency that you need to install. So you can do a pip install dash r requirements.txt. So that we're able to get you installed with all the required dependency. Press enter to do that. All right, so because I already did that, I will not do it again, but make sure that you have everything ready. One issue that within Mac OS is that uh, there is some data type that's not uh, supported by the Apple's silicon. So we're gonna need to do a little bit uh, modification of the source code, but don't worry. I think uh, it's not very extensive change. So, so we had some great issues reported and there is one solution. I think that can really be useful if you have some issues running the original code. So make sure that you can go to your source code file for this one. It's right located at the custom node xflux comfy UI. There is a node.py. You're gonna need to add those this line after three or one, and then you double check that the three the next line is right here. So basically, you're gonna need a to add the float 16. So this is the one that's supported by Apple Silicon. All right, so this one, make sure that you have that. This is a very key step, make sure you do that. And then next, there is uh, another file located uh, in some subdirectory. So there is a uh, xrc flux mass.py and uh, on the line 17, so there is a uh, float 32 to make sure that you have it modified as this one. So, so I think that's not very complicated. So the only two files you need to make a modification to them and the only total is three lines change. I think you will be able to do that. All right, so, so next I also want to mention that, uh, so since we are here, so as you can see right here, because of the control net, it's really resource extensive, which uses a lot of VRAM. For for me personally, because I had a, a 36 gigabytes RAM MacBook, so it's not enough to run it using the FP8 or F, FP or other format. So so I had to use the GGUF format, so which is a Q4 quantization, which helps to reduce the RAM needed. So that is really helpful to me. So I also had a video for GGUF format. So 
please refer to that one if you have any issue using the format. So with that, I think we can formally to start our UI and to get some demo to see how it uh, runs. All right, so, so make sure that you uh, go back to your root, comp root directory and you see that you have the main the P is right here for your config UI and you use a flag patch PyTorch enable MPS fallback equal to one and the Python main the P and the press enter. So so you, you will get able to get it running. Alright, so I have one running on my terminal and I access uh, and I am able to visit the address on my web browser. And this is one example of using the depth control net to do that. So I also tried the Kenny one, they both work. I used the, the example image and feel free to use someone which you are interested at. And for the demo purpose, I will use the default ones. So as I mentioned, there is one modification because I had to use the GGUF format model, the Q4 format, which can greatly reduce the model size. So that's very helpful for me because my machine is not very high end because it doesn't have quite a large RAM. So if you have a large RAM, you can try the original FP8 format. So basically you just need to drag from the model into the Xlabs sampler. And if you use the GGUF, you can able to drag from your model to the sampler here and uh, make sure that uh, you can have the same workflow. I will upload uh, this workflow to my GitHub page so you are able to have it. And then you see that this is one example I did earlier. And uh, for the RAM part, it used uh, quite a lot of RAM. So as you can see right here, it used about 16 gigabytes. And this is one is like idle. When it's actually running, I think it's close to 95% range. And uh, we can get an idea of the performance. I, I had to warn you, it's uh, quite slow. So this is the performance wise. So I did one example and it took me 22 minutes to get uh, this image because I had to use the default 25, but uh, I think you can reduce that to 20 or even 15. You can try that. But uh, regardless of the speed, I think uh, the good thing is that uh, we are able to run it on MacBook. And I think the next thing to do is we can try to see how to speed it up. Let's wait for that. And uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. I will provide uh, some latest uh, updates to that. Stay tuned. Thank you for your support. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.